President Trump issuing 15 pardons and five commutations yesterday. One of the notable names on the list of pardons is the former campaign foreign policy advisor to President Trump, George Papadopoulos. Papadopoulos was charged with making false statements during the Mueller investigation and sentenced to 14 days in prison and a fine of $9,500. Papadopoulos says he was set up by the FBI. He wrote about it in his book. It was a way to entrap President Trump. Joining me right now is the author of Deep State Target. He is a former Trump campaign foreign policy advisor, George Papadopoulos. George, it is great to see you this morning. Congratulations to you. Justice served. How are you feeling this morning after getting that presidential pardon? Thanks so much for having me, Maria, and I'm absolutely ecstatic. And first and foremost, I would just really like to express how grateful I am to President Trump uh, for pardoning me and correcting uh, what I think and what I think many people now with the overwhelming evidence out there uh, would believe was a tremendous injustice and something that should have never happened, not only to myself, but the 2016 presidential campaign and the country as a whole. So I'm extremely grateful. It's a tremendous moment for myself and my family, and it came on the cusp of uh, Christmas, so it made it even more special for me. You know, George, it's interesting that you get pardoned this week when just last week we found another dump of text messages that were declassified, George, from Peter Strzok. And some of those text messages showed that they were mocking you, uh, that you didn't want to talk to them, that your, about your mother didn't want you to talk to them, and they were pretty much just mocking you uh, about talking with them. I want you to go through your story, George. Uh, we've talked about this so many times, and I know you were set up. You wrote an entire book about it. We're looking at a picture of Peter Strzok right now, the disgraced FBI agent. Tell me what you believe took place and why you were targeted, George, in, in a couple of sentences. Yeah, well, at first, I, I think that um, pre one of President Trump's uh, biggest political achievements has actually been to expose the rot and corruption that pervaded his predecessor's attempt to not only undermine the democratic process, but obviously uh, prevent a smooth transition of power. And I was one of the few that was caught directly in the crosshairs of that attempt to undermine both the democratic process and the smooth transition of power to the Trump administration. And, ex and essentially what's going, what happened to me, and it seems that uh, John Durham is looking into a lot of the allegations that I've made, is that this essentially was a uh, Western intelligence operation led by the Obama administration to uh, set up various members of the Trump campaign to orchestrate a fake uh, conspiracy to spy on the campaign illegally, and should President Trump have won, to essentially handcuff him and prevent him from governing properly. That's uh, exactly what happened, what the country lived through. And with every piece of declassified information that comes out over the last weeks or so, and I hope more comes out, it just simply reinforces that. And uh, it really makes President Trump and his associates look like they were targeted in an illegal operation. And that's something that should not be viewed through a partisan lens, and it's something that should have never happened and, sh and should never happen again. Yeah, we're looking at the text of Peter Strzok, and you were referred to as Typhoon. You were Crossfire Typhoon. Uh, we know Crossfire Hurricane was, was their uh, investigation of President Trump. Here's Devin Nunes on Sunday Morning Futures this weekend talking about these texts as they were mocking you, saying, that's what you get for not listening to your mom. Here's Devin Nunes last week on Sunday with me. There was plenty of evidence of that. And here we have a text message that was clearly relevant to our investigation that they hid from us. And, and look, I would also say it's now clear that Papadopoulos was so mistreated, it's just unbelievable. They're actually, I mean, this, the FBI and DOJ in this country ought to be ashamed of themselves, mocking a target that they knew was a phony target. They're making fun of, of Papadopoulos. This is really, really bad, and somebody needs to, needs to pay a price for it. So, George, uh, you were working for a company called the International Center of Law Practice, I believe, and you said, I'm going to quit. I'm going to go work for Donald Trump, help him on his campaign. And they said to you, wait, 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 George, before you go anywhere, before you quit on us, we want to send you on a trip to Rome, which is so 
you know, crazy. You're quitting a company and they're telling you, wait, we want to pay a trip for you to go to Italy. When you go, when you went to Italy, they introduced you to a gentleman named Joseph Mifsud. And Joseph Mifsud told you what? Yeah, so uh, what's interesting about uh, this trip to Rome is uh, not only that, is that where I met Joseph Mifsud, who's probably the uh, epicenter of the entire uh, Russia collusion hoax. He's, Rome is also the city in which both Attorney General Barr and John Durham traveled to to learn about this mysterious individual who uh, provided this uh, fake information to me to set me up to help launch their criminal investigation, which we now know is a globe-spanning investigation. It's already uh, resulted in one indictment and a uh, prison referral by John Durham uh, to the FBI attorney that was actually running my case, Kevin Kleinsmith. So that's why this uh, trip to Rome that I took was so critical and why it's actually part of uh, the new counter-investigation as we speak and why I think we're going to learn a lot more about why I was sent to go to Rome, why I met this individual, and why Attorney General Barr and John Durham felt that learning about this professor that I ran into accidentally or not accidentally triggered their criminal investigation. Yeah, so this uh, professor that you quote unquote ran into told you that Russia had damaging e emails on Hillary Clinton in hopes that you were going to repeat that just a couple of uh, weeks later when you had another meeting. Uh, you, you think all of these people were spies? Were they all trying to entrap you, George? Yeah, look, I, I think uh, the, the situation that I found myself in uh, was a very shady situation. Just uh, last week, uh, there were declassified uh, text messages that Congressman Devin Nunes was referring to, in which uh, phone calls between myself and uh, the vice president, the former vice president of Fox News, were being recorded without warrants. Uh, there were, we now know, based on declassified information that the president has uh, released to the public, that uh, people uh, masquerading as professors were actually spies recording conversations. Uh, there were honeypots involved here. I mean, this was a very dirty operation. Uh, this was not run by the KGB. This was run by the U.S. government under the Obama administration. And after almost three years, we still don't even understand how and why this particular investigation was launched, except that it should have never started in the first place and it started much earlier than that artificial July 31st, 2016 date that Peter Strzok uh, released to the public. Yeah, and you say honeypots. I know that they introduced you to one woman who they said was his assistant, Stefan Hoppel's assistant. That's Azra Turk, beautiful blonde yeah. woman, who then they took you to dinner and plowed drinks uh, as you were talking about what you learned from Joseph Mifsud. Let me ask you, George, about another really sketchy part of your story, and that is when somebody dropped 10 grand in your lap. Uh, I think people need to understand what took place. Somebody said to you, look, we love your work. Here's $10,000. Take this money. You were skeptical. You accepted the money, but then you gave it to your lawyer. Am I right on this story? And then you got on a plane to go back to Dulles. And when you landed in Dulles, you were faced with FBI agents looking for the money that somebody gave you overseas. Is that right? Uh, look, I, I think that uh, my life uh, between 2016 and uh, the summer of 2017 uh, reminded a lot of, of uh, Jim Carrey and The Truman Show, where everything was fake around him except himself. And uh, every single uh, business person or professor or academic that I seem to have ran into between those critical months, we now later found out was uh, some sort of uh, operative or somebody that was sent to set me up to basically try and undermine and and uh, upend uh, Donald Trump's presidency, which of course never worked. And uh, it makes sense that uh, this uh, individual who drops this uh, money in my lap that we've had a discussion about before, uh, I found it very suspicious. I turned it over to my lawyer, and the next thing I find out is 15 FBI agents essentially um, uh, manhandling me at an airport looking for money that I didn't have on me. So. Uh, it seems that there was a target on me from the moment I joined the Trump campaign after I left Ben Carson's campaign through the summer of 2017, which obviously was in the middle of the Trump administration, where they were looking to take down particular targets of the Trump campaign and the Trump transition. And I was certainly one of those key targets. And fortunately, their uh, plot failed. The Trump presidency 
overwhelmingly succeeded, even with all of these hurdles. And I'm very confident that the president will be successful moving forward in his efforts to uh, to rectify this uh, bizarre uh, election uh, that we just found ourselves in. All right, George, be before you go, real quick, Carter Page has launched a major lawsuit against all of these perpetrators that spied on him unlawfully. Are you going to sue? So, uh, certainly, uh, I've been uh, reached out to by uh, some of the top firms in this country that I uh, believe I have a tremendous civil case. And now, of course, uh, with my pardon, uh, I would like to see what the impact of the pardon will be on a potential civil case. I haven't made a decision yet, but certainly uh, some very high-profile attorneys think there's a great case uh, to be made against the government, and we'll see what happens. I don't know yet. All right. And, and George, before you go, why did you spend, uh, was it 12 days or 14 days in prison? Just tell, tell us that, just in case the audience has questions there. Sure. So I, so I spent 11 nights in a, in a camp in, uh, in Wisconsin because I uh, misremembered when I met uh, this uh, infamous professor that we uh, discussed uh, during the interview. Um, and uh, the Joseph FBI Mitchell. felt that— Joseph Mipsud, and they felt because I misremembered when I met this person that I should have been arrested and uh, thrown in prison for it, um, which we assert. Okay. George, thanks very much for laying out the story. It's important that people understand what took place here. Uh, you are a warrior. It's good to see you this morning, George. Congratulations to you, and we'll be talking soon. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you.